Many of you have shared requests to see more economy class videos on our channel, and we appreciate your input, your engagement, your support. So in this video, we're flying in the main cabin on board the world's largest airline, American. Hello, Jet Centers. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, we're on the island of St. Martin. Now, I've heard from a lot of you that you'd like to see more economy class videos. So that's what we're going to try today. We're flying with American Airlines on a 737 MAX from here to Miami in economy. Join me. Let's check it out. But first, I needed to get out of that beach gear and back into a proper Jeb shirt. Much better. Feeling like my, uh, my old self. Today's flight from SXM will take about 2 hours and 44 minutes to cover the 1,200 miles at 38,000 feet before landing in Miami. After an excellent stay at the Morgan Hotel and Resort, which afforded us easy access to the fantastic views available over on Maho Beach, we hopped into a van and made our way over to the Princess Juliana International Airport. The airport, like much of the island, is still recovering from damage sustained by 2017's Hurricane Irma. Now, we'd submitted all of our travel paperwork through Verifly, checked in via the American Airlines app, and thankfully did not have any bags to check, saving us some money on this economy ticket. And all of that meant we could head straight to our gate. But we weren't certain whether restaurants were open airside. We found these days that airport websites can be somewhat unreliable about what's open. So rather than risk it, we stopped by this pre-security subway for a cheeky sandwich. Now, grabbing food before your flight is important. In the before times, you could count on buy on board options for a flight like this. But that's currently not the case. In economy, on a 1,200-mile flight like this, you're going to have extremely limited service. And as crowds continue to build, we decided to brave the lines and head in through immigration and security. It only took us about 10 minutes to make, it, make our way through everything. It turns out there were several places to eat, including what must be one of the world's few Domino's pizza joints in an airport. But we kept going to discover what we dubbed the world's greatest airport bar. We found a couple of seats, split our sub in two, toasted it, and ordered the local beer. One of the nice things about flying in business class or first class is the airline pretty much provides everything. That's not the case in economy. So uh, you got to pack some extras. Uh, Suzanne, what do you like to bring? I always grab a bottle of water or refill my water bottle for sure. Okay. Uh, I always like to bring um, some kind of entertainment. So like, you know, an iPad or a book or something to pass the time. What are you watching? Uh, I think the West Wing. I'm watching the West Wing this time. But more importantly, let us know in the comments below, what do you bring on an economy flight? What do you what like to bring? What are your tips and tricks? Let us know. Yeah. We pass the time by watching planes come and go. We also kept a close eye on our aircraft as it made its way down here from Miami. And we also watched the seat map very closely. We're trying a bit of a strategy today when it comes to seating. Suzanne's booked an aisle seat, I've booked a window seat with the hope that perhaps the middle remains open. We'll find out when we get on board whether that works. But regardless, we think it's a pretty good way to, you know, increase our chances for a little bit more comfort on today's flight. And on the topic of the seat map, we booked main cabin. American also charges additional fees for main cabin extra seats, their premium economy there in orange, or so-called preferred seats, which are in green. Our flight was delayed because of weather earlier in the day in Miami. Unfortunately, weather is the great equalizer when it comes to air travel. But when our plane finally did touch down in SXM, we decided to make our own approach over to the gate. And it was crowded, like very crowded. And boarding was further delayed for unexplained reasons. Okay, so let's make a bet. Is that middle seat gonna be open? What do you think? I think yes. I'm a little bit more skeptical seeing how crowded it is here, but we'll find out. Eventually, our group was called and we headed out to the bus. We made our way across a pretty rainy ramp. The 737 MAX that would take us up to Miami came into view. And we were asked to stay on the bus a little longer to wait out a burst of rain. And then finally, we climbed the stairs. We made our way through the first class cabin with its two two configured seats into the economy class cabin with a three three arrangement. Again, we bypassed main cabin extra seats, which offered more space for the standard main cabin seats. 
I loaded my carry-on bag into the overhead bin and sat down in our seats, 14D and F. Would 14E remain empty? These seats offer around 17 inches of width and 30 inches of pitch. Certainly tighter than first class, but sufficient, even for my 5 foot 11 inch frame. At 5 foot 3 inches, Suzanne was even more comfortable. The seat has a mechanism for holding a device to watch the in-flight streaming and a sufficiently sized tray table. Our water bottles fit nicely in the seat pocket, and there's a single window that provided an excellent view of the engine and wing. And so far, so good on that empty seat, fingers crossed. Each seat has an individual air vent and a reading light. There's also a flight attendant call button up here as well. The space under the seat in front of you has room for your carry-on bag. There are three universal sockets for the row, that's one for each seat, along with a USB power source for each seat as well. The overhead bins remained very open, even as boarding neared completion. We figured our chances of keeping the empty middle seat increased each time a person passed our row. Soon we heard the greatest announcement possible given our seating strategy. Boarding is complete. It worked. Once you're aboard, uh, two hours and 45 minutes in round, the weather in my ice got across 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. We fly in economy cabins fairly often, but I don't usually make videos about those flights because there doesn't seem to be that much to cover. But let me know in the comments if you think we should make more videos like this. As I mentioned on our SXM plane spotting video, I'll post a link to that video below, this airport's single runway presents a number of challenges. Chief among them are long wait times to depart. Now, our flight was scheduled to depart at 3.19, but between our delayed inbound aircraft and the 45 minutes we spent waiting on the taxiway, we didn't pull onto the runway until 5.15. It's almost two hours late. But it sure was exciting to see the people on the beach awaiting our jet blast. And after a quick departure, we were on our way. I set my iPad into the device holder, plug in my Bose noise-canceling headphones and the power cord, and turned on that old favorite, the West Wing. But the views out the window were quite distracting. If you don't have content already downloaded, American offers a pretty robust streaming platform at no additional cost. Now, internet access was available for a fee, and I bought a $19 pass to address some lingering emails while we were on board. It, it was fast. The crew on this flight was not in much of a hurry. About 30 minutes after departure, I kind of assumed maybe there would be no service. So, in need of a snack, Suzanne and I pooled our snacks from earlier flights. A cliff bar from Delta and some almonds from United. Turns out I was wrong about the service. About 45 minutes after we departed, flight attendants came around with drinks and snacks. We were both excited to get full cans of our favorites, a Coke for Suzanne and ginger ale for me. But I was over the moon for the snacks. Corn nuts! Suzanne seemed quite pleased with the quality of her Coca-Cola. Must have been a good vintage. And pouring my ginger ale gave me those Emirates First Class pre-departure Dom Perignon vibes, if you know what I'm saying. We continued to make our way over the Caribbean Sea. And I decided to get out and stretch my legs. The cabin of this 737 is quite beautiful, if you ask me. And the flight was relatively full. We were lucky to have that empty seat. The seat also has a headrest, which made it a bit more comfortable for getting a little shut-eye. We made our way over the Bahamas and soon began our approach into Miami. And that means it's time for the somewhat facetious Jeb score. Because this is an economy flight, we're only going to rate it on four factors. You wouldn't expect a lounge on an economy flight. So we'll look at the seat, the in-flight entertainment, the food, and the service. So this score will be out of 20 possible stars. Here goes. First, the seat. It's tight but pretty typical for an economy seat among U.S. carriers. Having a mechanism to hold your device is great since it frees up the tray table to eat or work, and that's a real plus. I also think each person having access to both a universal plug and a USB power source adds tremendous value. This is a four-star seat. The in-flight entertainment is fantastic. 
And if you bring your own device, you won't have a problem. But if you forget it at home or don't have one, you're in trouble. That's why I really prefer airlines that include seatback entertainment. This earns it three stars. Next up, the food. I love corn nuts, and getting a full can of whatever you want is a bonus. But it's time for more options to return. At the very least, that means buy on board choices. And until they're back, this earns two stars. Finally, the service. Well, there was some, but the flight attendants didn't exactly speak to us as much as they just stared at us waiting for our request. Now, I know this is a tough job, but this was an exciting trip for us, and I think a lot of other people, and a little bit of a festive attitude goes a long way, so that's three stars. That leaves American Airlines with 12 stars out of a possible 20 on this flight from SXM to Miami on board a 737 MAX. Oh, and that delay meant we had to make a mad dash through customs, immigration, and security, barely making our flight home to Greensboro. And after a mad dash through Miami Airport, we're about to board Greensboro. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky. Suzanne, are you ready to board? Yes, let's go. Almost there. It's uh, about time to get on the plane. She's going to say something. I don't have anything more to add. It is almost time, I think. Let's get, uh, let's get this uh, journey on the road, on the, in the air. Let's get this journey in the air. Weigh in on the great debate. Window or aisle? I'm pooped. That's a workout. Hey Jeff, question. How do you feel about flying on the I'm kidding. 